After thoroughly examining the brilliant Segway i105 robotic mower in practice in one of our recent videos, today, as promised, we have a separate video on the assembly, setup, and commissioning of the robot. We'll take a step-by-step -step look at the best approach for assembly and what to consider during setup to achieve perfect results with the Navamo. By the way, if you haven't seen the robot review yet, make sure you check it out. I'll link it again up here on the info card. And with that, let's dive right in after the intro. But if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel now and activate the notification bell to never miss a video in the future. You can find the current prices of the robot to support this channel down in the video description. Thank you very much for your support, and let's get started. As we've seen in the previous review of the robotic mower, the contents of both Navamo I-105 and I-108 are completely identical, but also very extensive. The mower is in the middle, well protected by several cardboard templates and foam inserts, with the small accessories surrounding it in a separate box. At the bottom of the box are the charging station and the user manual, and that's it. So, after getting an initial overview of the contents of the robotic mower, we can then proceed to assembly. The first and most important step is finding a suitable position for the charging station. While we can place devices with a boundary wire almost anywhere, GPS devices are very picky. For the mower to have a sufficiently good positioning, both the charging station and the GNSS receiver must have a clear view of the sky and must not be obstructed by large trees or roof overhangs. More precisely, the distance should be at least 2 meters from trees, walls, or similar obstacles. Personally, I would recommend choosing an even larger distance to ensure that enough satellites can be received. Another option is to mount the GNSS receiver on the building, for example, on the gable of the house. Segway offers a suitable bracket for this purpose, which can be optionally purchased if needed. If you're not entirely sure if the chosen position is correct, you can initially place the station provisionally and check the satellite reception using the Satellite Signal Analyzer from the app. Here's how many common satellites are received and whether the signal strength is sufficient or not. Another criterion is that the charging station must be placed on a level surface. We can best check this with a simple spirit level. The reason behind this is that if the station is tilted, the mower may enter the station at an angle or slip out sideways, thus not charging. So once we have the perfect position for the station and the GNSS antenna, we can securely anchor the charging station to the ground with the four included ground screws and the appropriate Allen key. Next to it, or alternatively, on the gable of the roof, we place the GNSS receiver. In my case, I opted to mount it right next to the charging station. For this, Segway provides a large metal ground spike by default, which we simply ram into the ground with our foot to provide enough stability for the antenna. Next, we need two metal rods for the receiver. As you can see, the two rods are assembled so that the thread of one rod points downward and the two small indentations on the other rod point upward. The rods are not screwed together or anything similar, but simply assembled and then screwed onto the ground spike with the thread. Note that the screwing process cannot be done from the top rod, but the lower of the two rods should be gripped when tightening. Once the shaft is mounted, double check to ensure that it's truly vertically aligned and not tilted. If not, slightly readjust the ground spike and then attach the GNSS antenna. To prevent it from falling off on its own during the next storm, you'll find a small indentation on the side. The single cross screw included in the package is screwed into it, securing the GNSS antenna in place. The only thing left now is the wiring, which is also a breeze. There are two separate connections on the back of the charging station for this purpose. One for the power and another for the GNSS antenna. Both connections not only have different plugs, but are also marked with different symbols, making confusion practically impossible. Once both cables are connected, plug the power supply plug into the socket and manually push the mower into the station to fully charge and turn it on for the first time. 
By the way, the power supply cable is 10 meters long, which in my opinion is completely sufficient to find a good position for the charging station in the garden. Finally, we can secure the cable to the antenna pole using the four provided Velcro straps to prevent it from hanging loose. And with that, we've completed the first part. The charging station and antenna are fully assembled and ready for use. Consequently, we can now move on to the second and final part of the setting up and commissioning of the robotic mower. The first and most important step is to download the Navamo app on our mobile devices, be it a smartphone or a tablet. In the robotic mower's user manual, we find a QR code that, when scanned, directs us straight to the manufacturer's app or, alternatively, we can search for Navamo in the app or Play Store. After downloading the app, it's necessary to create a user account or register to activate the robotic mower. Since we previously inserted the robot into the charging station, it should already be fully powered up, allowing us to connect to it. Also worth mentioning at this point is that, as probably already noticed, the device not only displays information on the screen, but also generates audible signals. You'll hear a beep when the robotic mower powers up. Arriving in the app, at the bottom of the home screen, we find a button to connect to the mower. After selecting this, we're asked which series we want to connect to because the app is the same for both the H and the new I series. Then we're prompted to power up the mower, which we've already done, so we can skip this step. Then the app automatically begins searching for devices nearby. In my case, the device was recognized without any problems, and clicking on the image of the visible robot is enough to initiate the connection setup. It takes a moment, and then the Bluetooth connection with the mower is established. Consequently, we can make further settings such as the country and time zone, but more importantly, the next step is to connect to the Wi-Fi network. Here, we can choose which Wi-Fi network to connect the device to. It's important to mention that, up to now, the robotic mower can only be connected to a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network. The faster 5 GHz band is currently not possible. After entering the password, it takes another brief moment for the device to log into the Wi-Fi network. Then, we're prompted to read and confirm the user agreement. Here are a few more pointers on the basics of the robotic mower's positioning technology and the installation of charging stations and antennas, which we can skip as we've already correctly mounted them. Once this is done, we finally land on the final home screen. As you can see, after connecting to the Wi-Fi network, the device checks immediately for any new software updates. If, as shown in the video, there are updates available, we can download and install the latest update with a simple click. Before initiating the update, we're shown which version it is and what improvements the firmware update brings. After starting the update, the display of the robotic mower shows the string OTA, signaling that the mower is in the update process and should not be turned off or removed from the charging station. The app also displays the current status of the update. Depending on how good or poor the Wi-Fi connection is in the garden, the update process may take a few minutes. It's also worth mentioning that the robotic mower may restart several times during the update, as was the case for me. Once all updates are installed, we're also notified we can now begin mapping our lawn area. To do this, we click on Create Map at the bottom center of the home screen, where we receive a brief introduction on what to consider during mapping. After reading through or skipping all points, the mower performs a brief self-check and allows us to proceed with mapping if no errors are found. First, we click on Calibrate for this purpose. The robotic mower now exits the charging station and rotates 180 degrees, placing it directly in the forward position. Another click on Start Mapping and we're taken to the familiar control view to navigate the robot. In the app, we're prompted at the beginning to create our first zone, after which two small joysticks appear on the smartphone screen, allowing us to control the robot through our garden. 
The precise control of the robot, similar to a small remote-controlled car, is extremely easy and requires virtually no learning curve for those who've never done such a thing before. Otherwise, of course, you can also make a few test runs before starting the mapping. Once you feel confident, it's time to drive the robot along the boundaries of the lawn area and save it. Meanwhile, the mower tracks its position and scans the surroundings with the camera to create the digital map. Therefore, it's crucial to accurately follow the boundaries. If you're not satisfied with the result, it's better to map or correct the area again because the precision of later navigation along the boundaries depends on our previous mapping. I particularly appreciate the approach of how the Navamo handles correction of mapping in this context. If I accidentally deviate, I can easily undo the last step. By holding down the button with the eraser symbol, the robot slowly backs up along the mapped path to the point where I want to make corrections. From there, I can try the path again. Another ingenious feature that Navamo offers is AI mapping. That's right, in addition to manual mapping, the device allows us to automatically continue mapping with the press of a button. The prerequisite is a precise delineation of the lawn area. Otherwise, the AI cannot recognize the boundary cleanly and will not activate in this case. Admittedly, I haven't seen such a feature in any robotic mower so far, but it's really practical, especially for large areas with easily recognizable lawn edges. But that's not all. Next to the symbol for AI mapping, there are two small symbols for edgeless mowing. By default, when mapping, we should ensure that the robot's tire runs along the lawn border. This ensures that the robot doesn't drive onto the boundary or scrape along the protruding lawn edges. On the other hand, we can now activate the edgeless mowing directly next to it. In the app, as you can see, two dashed lines appear, indicating that the robotic mower will drive to the boundary at these points. In practice, this ensures edgeless mowing, but it should only be activated if the adjacent area has enough space for the mower to pass. I've extensively tested the required distance and how far the mower actually goes beyond the boundary in the review video for you. Once we've completely outlined the area with mapping and returned to the charging station, the mower automatically recognizes it, and we can finish the mapping or add additional elements such as no-go zones, connecting paths between two zones or the like. Creating additional zones is done in the same way as the first zone, except that for each additional zone, we must add a connecting path because the robot needs to know how to move from zone A to zone B. Then in the first zone, we navigate to the position where the transition should start, confirm the process, and guide the robotic mower into the other zone using the joysticks, just like in the previous mapping. As you can see, a connecting path now appears between the zones, resembling a small road. This will be the path the robotic mower will use to travel from one zone to the other in the future. Another important feature found in the Navamo app is the setup of no-go zones. These are areas on the lawn that the mower must not enter under any circumstances, such as open flower beds or newly planted areas. Setting up such zones is done the same way as a normal zone. We select the no-go zone option, move the robotic mower to where the zone should start, begin mapping, navigate the area, and save it. In practice, the robotic mower will now strictly avoid and bypass these areas. Contrary to this, there's only one variant called Vision Fence from the zone. These are areas that the robotic mower should definitely traverse, even if the built-in camera indicates otherwise. For example, this is the case when I have a large bear patches or individual paving stones incorporated as a path in my lawn. Normally, the camera would recognize these as obstacles, and the mower would not pass over them. By creating such zones around the objects, it ensures that the robotic mower fully mows these areas without hesitation. That covers the mapping of the areas. Next, we can make a few more small adjustments, which are also highly recommended. Firstly, there's the mowing direction, which we can customize. To do this, we click on Map Management, select the zone we want to adjust, and click on Edit. 
Then we see the sub-item mowing direction. In this view, we now see a compass-shaped representation of the mowing directions with orange lines. By default, all directions are selected here, so the robotic mower slightly rotates with each new mowing cycle to avoid always following the same patterns and to truly catch all grass blades. If we don't want that, we can activate and deactivate the individual mowing directions by selecting the lines and possibly even rotate them slightly, allowing the mowing result to be adapted to every garden. And last but not least, the most important, the mowing schedule. Here too, we can set a precise schedule according to our needs under the settings and tell it when the robot should mow and when not. Creating the schedule is admittedly extremely easy and intuitive. The individual weekdays and times are depicted as bars. For example, if I want the device to mow from 12 to 4 p.m., I simply mark the bar in this range with my finger and the times are automatically inserted. Afterward, I can still, similar to setting a mobile phone alarm, adjust the times and set them separately for my previously created zones. Ultimately, as you can see, it's easily possible in practice to create multiple zones and manage them without much effort. And that's all there is to say about setting up the robot. I hope the video can help you, and if it does, please show your support by giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel for free and activate the bell to not miss any future videos. Feel free to leave questions and suggestions in the comments below. I look forward to your feedback. By the way, you can find the current prices of the device in the video description below. Thank you very much for your support, and with that, stay healthy, take care, and see you next time. Goodbye.